the veiled image at Sias, a youth, a thirst for knowledge, hot desire. To Sias came, intent to explore the dark and hoarded wisdom of the Egyptian priests. Though many a grade of mystery hurrying on, far and more far still press the inquiring soul. In scarce the hierophant could cool or calm the studious fever of impatient toil. What, he exclaimed, is worth a part of truth? What is my gain unless I gain the whole? Has knowledge, then, a lesser or a more? Is this thy truth? Like sensual, gross enjoyment, a sum doled out to each in all degrees, larger or smaller, multiplied or minished. Is not the truth one and indivisible? Take from the harmony a single tone, a single tint that from iris bow. And lo, what once was all is nothing, while fails to lovely whole one tint or tone. Now, while thy thus conversed, they stood within a lonely temple, circle-shaped and still. And as the young man paused abroad, his gaze upon a veiled and giant image fell. Amazed, he turned into his guide, and what beneath the veil stands shrouder and yonder? Truth, answered the priest. And do I, then, for truth strive and alone? And is it now by this thine ceremonial robe that truth is hid? Wherefore, that wherefore that with this goddess rests, till I, thus saith the goddess, lift this veil, may it be raised by none of mortal born. He who with guilty and unhallowed hand too soon profanes the holy and forbidden. He says, Goddess, well, he shall see truth, a rare, strange oracle. And hast thou never lifted the veil? No, nor desired to raise. What, nor desired? Were I shut out from the truth by this slight barrier and command divine? Broke on his speech the guide, far weightier son. This area gaze, then thy conjecture deems, light to touch, lead heavy to conscious. The young man, thoughtful, turned him to his home, and the fierce fever of wish to know robbed night of sleep. Upon his couch he rolled, at midnight rose resolved unto the shrine, Timorously stole the involuntary step, but light the bound that scaled the holy wall. And dauntless was the spring that bore within that circle of solemn dome the daring man. Now halts he where the lifeless silence sleeps, in the embrace of the morning food solitude, silence unstirred. Saved by the hollow echo, answering his tread along the mysterious vaults, high from the opening of the dome above, came the wan shining of the silver moon, and awful as some pale presiding god, glistening adown the range of vaults obscure. In its long veil concluded the image stood, with an unsteady step he onward passed, already touched with violating hand, the holy and recoiled. A shudder thrilled his limbs, hot fire and icy cold by turns, and an invisible arm did seem to pluck him back from the deed. O miserable man, what would thou? Thus, with the innermost heart, murmured the warning whisper, Wilt thou dare thy all-howled 
hallowed to profane? May mortal born, so spect the oracle, not lift the veil, till I myself shall raise, yet said it not. The same oracle world who lifts the veil, I see truth behind. Be what there may, I dare the hazard, I will lift the veil. Loud rang his shouting voice, and I will see, see. A lengthening echo, mocking, shrilled again. He spoke and raised the veil. And ask ye what unto the gaze was there within revealed. I know not, pale and senseless, at the foot of the dreaded statue of the Egyptian Isis. The priest beheld him at the dawn of day. But what he saw, or what did they befall? His lips disclosed not, ever from his heart, was felled the sweet serenity of life. And the deep anguish dug the early grave. Woe, woe to him. Such were his warning words, answering some curious, impetuous brain. Woe, for she shall never delight him more. Woe, woe to him who treads through the guilt to truth.